I've missed you all so much. Oh my goodness, my cat's gonna make this really hard. Hi, Willow. Willow's really needy today. Ugh. This is Will Beans. She's gonna be making this hard probably the whole time. So blame her. But I'm really excited. It's been so long since we've had a craft tags. Go outside, Beans. Or not, whatever. You do you. But yeah, uh, I, uh, I'm really excited that we're back, guys. Um, and today, uh, I'm going to show you how I made all the felting stuff that I've been using on all my costumes. I've had a lot of you say, like, oh, well, uh, I would love to felt, but it just takes so long, or wow, isn't it really hard, or like, you know, and I've shown you guys some of the stuff that I do, um, like, uh, a few weeks ago, I was working on Zandala's cloak, and you guys got to see the beginning parts of that, I'm gonna close the door so that our cat shuts up, here we go, and, uh, I never got to show you the end, and the end is really important in felting, so we're just gonna do a teensy little project today that I can do very quickly, and so you can see the whole process, and I've done a lot of watching tutorials and YouTube videos and stuff, and I've seen how a lot of people approach this, so um, I've practiced a couple of the things that they've said, and I'm going to show you what works best for me, and um, obviously I need to do this as quickly as possible pretty often for a lot of different costumes, so I'm going to show you some of the time-saving hacks that I've figured out, uh, and I didn't invent any of this, um, I learned these through... Uh, purchasing PDF tutorials from other people around the world and they've all been very helpful and great but I just want to make it really easy for you guys so that you guys can uh, incorporate these into your Halloween costumes too not just D&D stuff but Halloween's coming up which I'm very excited about thank you for all the new followers by the way Hala Nala just uh, followed and I know that we have had a couple followers uh, while we weren't live, so thank you everybody, uh, all your support has been so awesome, and I love you all so much, welcome to the Hag Fam, but yeah, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start off by showing you all the stuff we've got here, um, I'm gonna get this out of the way first, cause it's real big, uh, this is just a weed, a weed sprayer, um, I have it filled with dish soap, like Dawn dish soap, any flavor is fine, whatever you like smelling, uh, pick up that soap. Uh, you don't need a lot of it. Um, I'd say, like, one big squirt, um, in the whole thing of water. Like, you really don't need a ton of soap. It goes really far. Um, so now that that's off the table, we can get to the rest of this stuff. These are needles, felting needles. Um, this one is very sharp, uh, and what you do with this is you shape the felt. Needle felting is its own whole thing. Um, and what you do with that is you, uh, like let's say you have some wool here and you want to make it into a ball, you can like go like this and take your little stabby thing. It's very sharp. I just stabbed myself already. But you're going to like poke it in onto itself over and over and over. And they've got like big sheets of foam. You could, any, any big sheet of like couch foam will do you can just like stab at it until it makes the shape you want and then that way you can kind of sculpt with it it's really cool um, but also you can use this needle to poke into a piece of cloth to make a design on a flat surface too so that's why we have that out here we may or may not be using that today but I just wanted to show you these are really cool um, and then this is a little comey thing that helps you arrange all the felt on your flat piece so it's not just sticking to your fingers all the time um, and those are really helpful too especially if you're making like really intricate designs on a flat surface but all the other stuff we have here this is a dryer bag uh, you get these at Walmart they're just in the laundry aisle um, usually you'd put like delicate lingerie in these but we aren't using that for that right now but yeah, they just zip close. They're made of like a material that isn't going to snag on the fabric at all. And I'll show you what we use that for later. Then we also have bubble wrap. We have plastic. Um, when you go to buy the plastic, 
I'd recommend getting something a little thicker than um, some of the, the like the drop clothy type stuff you get for painting. Um, like when when I went to Walmart to pick out drop cloth type plastic, they had a few different thicknesses. So just pay attention. Try to get one of the more thicker ones. If you get it too thin, it's almost like saran wrap, and then like it just sticks to everything. Because remember, all this is going to be wet. So also the thicker plastic is really great for the method I'm going to use um, with my sander because if you're putting this right on here for a long time and your fabric or your uh, plastic's really thin it might actually melt your plastic or like you know and it'll stick to your sander there's a lot of friction going on you just want something a little stronger than like a trash bag um, and then we've got towels um, I've got more than this uh, because you need a lot of these especially if you're doing really big pieces uh, but yeah uh, Make sure they're really gross towels. You don't, I mean, you don't want to use a nice towel because, like, let's say, oh, I have this really nice dark moss green uh, wool. Sometimes the dye comes out of it and uh, drips all over the floor in the water that comes off of it, and you don't, you don't want to be dyeing your towels if you really like your towels. So either use rag towels or... These are actually beach towels I got at Walmart for like $3 each. They're like just the awfulest off-brand kind you can get. Um, and that's just because I didn't have enough rag towels. Thanks for the follows. I know I've missed more. Pancake Demons, that is the coolest name you win for the name of the day so far. Let's see if you're outdone. But yeah, you'll want a lot of rag towels. And then, to start... What we got here is our creepy fabric. Now, because it's Halloween time, I want to show you the difference between creepy fabrics. Here's a creepy fabric that we probably don't want to use. See how big this weave is? It's so big, it's just not going to be of much help to us. Also, it barely holds its own form, and that's great for, like, stretching it across doors and making big holes, you know if that's what you want, but that's not what we want. We're using this for felting. And so here's a good example of creepy fabric that I do like for this. And why it works is that it's uh, mostly cotton, almost all the time, it's just cotton. This actually doesn't even say what it's made out of, but I've used it before and I know it works. Um, and it's just a cotton gauze. You can see how thin it is. If it's not Halloween and you just can't find creepy fabric, um, you can go to the cooking aisle of any grocery store. Walmart probably has it too, but it's just called cheesecloth. Um, yeah, uh, it, it can be more expensive because sometimes they, you know, it's like food grade or whatever. Uh, but if you're in a bind and you just really need something, cheesecloth works great. Um, or really just any cotton gauze. This is uh, gauze that I bought, not during Halloween season, but it was left over from Halloween at Joann's. And it was way on sale because it was like July. And um, I want to say it was like $3 a yard, which was super, super great. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. Because this is hard to see, I'm going to go ahead and use the black. This is the black creepy fabric I've got left over. So what we're going to do is make a cool wrist wrap thing. So what I'm going to do is just cut a big piece right now. That way we can get all the excess off the table. And by the way, I do plan on uploading all these to YouTube um, quite soon. It's the first time I've had a real break in my schedule. Um, but uh, I have announcements soon, and you guys will realize that it's not actually even a break, because I've had a lot more uh, job offers lately, and you'll soon hear about them. But I can't talk about them yet, but I'm very excited. It's been, it's been great. I've had a lot going on. 
uh, this whole costume career is taking off way better than I expected it would. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited uh, to tell you guys more. But all the uh, stream upgrades and getting the Craft Tags Discord going and uploading all these to YouTube has been on the to-do list for a while now. But I will be getting to them soon. And then you guys can rewatch this tutorial as many times as you want. But yeah, so what we're going to do here is first I've laid out the, the plastic. I need more coffee. I'm going to drink my tea. Oh, thanks, Axis. Um, I actually do have one set up already. I just haven't uh, spent the time getting to know Discord really well, and like, like I want to know the program really well before I'm inviting people to create a community on it because I want to be able to control it and make sure that everybody's being nice and you know uh, I'm not like doing it wrong. Snapchat's another one of those things that I just I am so lost on and. <laughs> Like, I, I'm, I'm scared of using it because I don't really understand it very well. But that's the only hang-up. Um, I, uh, I do plan on getting it all figured out. Probably in the next week or two. For sure. But yeah. Oh, hi, Kayla! Kayla's here. I'm going to cough really quick. I'm also still getting over a huge cold, so uh, there might be a lot of muting and coughing and sneezing, so bear with me. Um, first of all, what I'm going to do is lay out some of my sparkle fabrics. Well, sparkle fabrics. It's called Angelina. I used it in my Zandala cloak, and I actually put a little bit in Chris Perkins' cloak as well, because this stuff is called Forest Blaze, and you can see, not through the bag very well, but... It's like a green with orange, and it looks super cool and gross, and and I love it. Um, actually, what are we gonna we're gonna make this a bracer, aren't we? The thing the thing with uh, felting is that depending on how much or how little felt, or I mean wool you put on, will determine how much it shrinks, and also the fabric backing you use, or sometimes you don't need a fabric backing. That's called Nuno felting or just wet felting. Nuno felting is when you felt it onto a cloth uh, backing. Um, usually they do that with silk, which is um, another great alternative to the creepy fabric. I'm really sorry. Sirenscape is like doing weird things with the rain today. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, the rain's going in and out on the show today, and I'm sorry. But um, when, when you start a project like this, you're going to want to be aware of how much it's going to shrink. Because especially if you're making something big like a cloak or a shirt or a skirt, all sorts of things, you need the measurements. You need to know how big it's going to end up. Um, a good rule of thumb is just make it bigger than you're going to need it at the end. Um, but today we're just going to have some fun and not worry about the math. So what we're going to, I already put sparkles on it, and I, I kind of messed up, but uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to make it a little bigger than we need it, but we don't need it this big. Oops. So I'll just make a small cut there just to... And the rest of this, we're going to cut like so. This is the obviously horribly janky way <laughs> of doing this. You're going to want to make a pattern for your arm. You're going to want to make a measurement of some kind. Uh, but just for the general idea, pretend I did all that. We're just going to have kind of a, a general shape here. And this is kind of what a, a bracer would look like, too. Um, it'll have the straight sides. It'll be 
you know, like where you uh, lace lace it up right here, like if you were making this out of leather. But um, we want like a little a little piece that kind of hangs over our wrist. And then we can also obviously trim this if it doesn't shrink enough. But we'll see. It might. I also want to put some cool holes in it because I want to show you guys how that works too. But yeah, let's pretend that like we measured this well, we took our time, we did a test, we know how much it's going to shrink or not shrink, all that good, good stuff. Um, but holes can be fun. And this is kind of uh, the idea behind the color palette I've chosen for today is like a kind of like a forest warlock. Um, it's it's obviously a little bit scrummy. Scrummy is my D&D uh, my character. Uh, she is a warlock gnome who raised herself in the forest, and uh, she's kind of evil, <laughs> you know, depending on her mood. She's chaotic neutral, if you really want to know, but... Sorry if you guys can hear me gulping, that's really gross. Um, but yeah, so now that we have the shape we like, um, we're going to go back in with the sparkles, just a little bit here and there. And this is the top. Um, you can obviously plan for the other side of your fabric to be showing at the end, um, if you want, like sometimes, like, people will felt right over the holes, and then the holes will make bubbles on the other side. You'll see, actually, um, by the time we're all done here, sometimes what you end up with on the other side looks cooler than the top, and that's totally up to you. You get to use whatever side you want, because that's how we do this. <laughs> Very into the fifth element tat. Thank you! I don't regret it yet, so... Me too. <laughs> so what we're going to do, um, I also kind of want to show you the different kinds of wool you can use. Um, this stuff's called Angelina. It's plastic, um, which means it won't stick to the wool or the cotton. Um, and basically the rule of thumb here is you want to work with all natural materials. And if you're going to add in unnatural materials, they need to be sandwiched between natural materials because Natural materials are the only things that will stick to each other. Um, and it's the same with the wool that you choose. Uh, when you go to like worldofwool.com, which is where I get all my stuff, um, they've got mixtures, they've got like pure wool, they've got synthetic wool, like 70-30, 50-50 mixtures. Um, I've never used a mixture of synthetic and natural fibers. Um, Obviously, you totally can. They're not, like, impossible to work with or anything. You just need to do some tests and uh, try some stuff out. Make sure that you know how it's going to end up before you buy a bunch of it, lay it all out, felt it. Y you want to know what you're getting, you know. So, as always, do a test. Saves you a lot of time and money. And you learn stuff. But so what I have here, these are called wool locks, um, and there's the world of wool, uh, oh, you're not going to be able to see. It says wool locks raven, 50 grams. So 50 grams is like a this size bag, um, not stuffed very full, and obviously it's got little ringlets, there are little balls, it's not combed out, basically. It's a lock, um, like right off the sheep. And what we can do with these, which is super cool is we can like hang them off the edge of the fabric and they'll still stick because some of it's touching the fabric but we can make like hangy danglies which are always fun especially because I'm kinda making this for scrummy and scrummy is kind of a gross creepy nasty little gnome And I love her. She just has some questionable tastes. But so, um, this is going to be the front. This is where it'll hang off of my wrist, like on the back, like this. So it'll kind of 
like hang right here it'll look really cool so all these little danglies will like kind of cover my fingers a little bit but that's cool I like it um, and obviously there's a bunch of other different kinds of wool uh, merino is a really nice kind of wool I don't know why it's called merino somebody's asked me that before I really don't know it's combed out and soft and smooth as you can see this is called moss um, this is 300 grams I've used a lot of it already, but you get a bigger bag of it. You order this by the by the gram um, count on World of Wool, and it's kind of hard to know how much you're getting until you see it in person. But uh, like these are all hundred gram bags. They were really stuffed full when I got them. Um, you can order as much as you want. I think it's in increments of a hundred. Grams. Here's another 100 gram. I love this color. It's called pewter. It's like a warm, it's actually the exact color of my cat, Willow. <laughs> oh, we got stuff in the chat. Let me read. Felting with your dog fluff. That's amazing. <laughs> Mixed result, I can imagine. I've thought about doing that with my cat a lot of times, and we actually saved like a big hair patty, but it had like all of her dandruff in it too, and I was just like, yeah, I'll skip that. Um, gradient wools. Yes! Oh, man. Axis has found the the cool colored wool on worldofwool.com. They have so many. So many. And uh, you should tex uh, check out the texture wool or the effect fiber area of their website. It's also crazy awesome. Um and I, I wish I had more to show you. I can't find them right now, though, because my house is a mess. But uh, this is one of them, the wool locks. And they come in all different colors. And you can just get them in white and dye them whatever color you want. That's the thing you guys need to remember about all this, including the creepy cloth. Just dye it. Um, it is going to be uh, visible on the back. So if you don't want it to be like a glaringly different color, uh, you can dye it really easily to match the the product color at the, the color you want at the end. Um, what am I making? Well, I'm making an arm wrap thing. Yeah, it looks like somebody answered you. But yeah, um, we're just kind of making this up as we go so I can show you guys the techniques and the finished product probably isn't going to be that amazing. <laughs> but we'll see. Um... Oh, thank you, Pepper Choi. I'm so glad you enjoyed those costumes. I really loved making them, especially Perkins' costume. Zandala's costume was a personal project, and it got really derailed <laughs> due to a lot of client work, um, which is really sad. Hopefully I'll have time to revisit Zandala and finish Summerwise, of course. Um, a lot of my plans had to be postponed on that just because I was so exhausted. But so what I'm doing right here is taking, uh, this is merino wool, so it's really soft, and I'm just like, kind of like a pizza dough, like just stretching it out as much as you can without creating any really big holes. But then you just lay it on. And I'm using a couple different colors of green and black. And uh, what I'm going to do is kind of create like a really cool gradient that goes up my arm. So this will be like my elbow. Well, this will be my elbow. This will be my wrist. So we're going to make like a light green into black sort of deal. Hey, look! There's some grass from the sheep. Oh my god, that's adorable. Sometimes they don't get all the stuff out and it's just really funny. <laughs> I played a Draconic Ancestry Sorcerer in part because of the Zandala. Oh my god, that's so awesome! They're really fun. I can't wait to play her more tomorrow. I really hope I don't die so I get to keep playing her, but... Uh, my goal for Zandala is that they, they don't... Um, well, I don't die. Uh, and I can leave the show and then maybe come back again later someday. And visit them and hang out more as Zandala, because I love playing with them so much. Also, hey, a friend of Holly here. 
Thank you for explaining. Oh, you're welcome. Sheena Duquette. Welcome. Everybody say hi, Sheena Duquette. I really hope I said your name right. I'm sorry. I mess up everybody's names. But yeah, so what I'm just going to do is... Um, I'm going to hang... Let me show you guys the bottom of this, too, so you can see. But what I'm going to do here is kind of make some dangles. See, her ring keeps going in and out. That's so weird. <laughs> yes, everybody pray to the the Waffle Crew gods that Zandal lives to see another day. But the th cool thing about this is um, you can lay out different uh, danglies. I've seen people make like like uh, grid patterns with this stuff, and um, we're kind of gonna go for like a mushroomy squiggle. So I'm gonna use a bunch of these like these things just to kind of crisscross over each other and make like a, a weird I don't know. Like a weird pattern of some kind. And we'll just have to make sure that the stuff sticking to the fabric sticks really good. And then the dangleys won't fall off. I will sell my soul. No selling souls, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sheena, I think, um, we, we kind of explained it a little bit at the beginning, but, uh, this is creepy cloth, it's the same as cheesecloth, just sold in different colors by, like, fabric stores, um, cheesecloth works great as well, you can dye it to whatever color you want, but a lot of people, like, especially if you're gonna make really, like, nice garments out of this, um, you are gonna want to look into, like, 100% cotton or 100% silk, um, like gauze, they've got chiffon, they've got all sorts of things, like different types of fabric, depending on the feel you want, like, you could make it super soft and comfy, like, especially if you're going to make a scarf, I would really recommend checking out some of the silk they've got available, um, dharmatrading.com, that's D-H-A-R-M-A trading.com, um, they're like a silk dyeing uh, place. They mostly deal with like tie dye type stuff, but they have fabric available in white and black. Um, that's 100% silk. That's a bunch of. Th that's what I used for um, Chris Perkins' costume. I used the white silk. They're they're white silk gauze. I think in the lightest uh, weight that they sell it and dyed it myself to get all those creepy colors and textures on there and it worked out great I love it and they ship really fast and they're really great like I've had problems with my orders in the past and they've like called me directly and been like hey how can we fix this we messed up on our end they're really great there so I definitely want to plug them they're always very helpful so what we've got down here you kinda can see it but it's just kinda some weird, gross, drapey, you know, things. And that's in the light green. And then we're just going to fill in all this other stuff with a gradient of other greens. And you can get really, really um, smooth transitions if you spend a lot of time. Uh, like blending the colors together. We don't need to do that for this one, obviously, because this one's meant to be like mushroomy and gross. So, uh, it's okay that it doesn't look super nice. But, um, especially if you go onto Pinterest, if you type in wet felting or felting, um, 
or even just textile manipulation. That's another good search term. You can see a lot of the really crazy variations people can get with felt. Um, like, uh, I don't think I have it anywhere near me, but I had a piece of silk that um, I had cut off of Perkins' costume because it was just too long. But um, you can just, like, you can put, like, this much silk or um, wool onto silk if you spread it out thin enough and then when it shrinks back it kind of like crinkles it up like gross skin it's really cool like um, depending on how much you experiment with this you can make all sorts of crazy textures and basically just invent your own fabric and um, part of the reason I wanted to show you these effect fibers is that when you like kind of drape them on and sandwich them in between, they make big, ugly ripples in the finished product, and it looks awesome, especially if you're going for, like, some fantasy-looking, like, natural fabric that maybe a druid would have uh, created for themselves in the forest, or, you know, just, just different looks other than your basic cotton, which is what most people go to when they're gonna build a costume. You can get like expensive looking things through this technique. You can get ugly looking things, haunted looking things. It's great. And then we're gonna layer on some black as well. Hi Mandolin! Glad you're here. Yes, uh, Kayla, everything is layering on dry. I like to do it that way because then you get to see what your finished product's gonna look like. I found that if you get it wet, um, especially like in between layers, you're looking at something that's way darker than how it will dry, and then your your view of like your color palette gets really messed up, you know? Um, and you don't want any surprises, so I like to do all the layering dry. Because then you basically know what you're going to get as far as the colors. The texture will change, obviously, and the shape. But uh, just being able to judge what kind of colors you're going to end up with is really, really fantastic. Oh yeah, um, if you're allergic to wool, don't do this. <laughs> um, I don't have any alternatives for people. I mean, like, if, if, uh, if you're allergic to sheep's wool, obviously don't use sheep's wool. Maybe try alpaca. I, I don't know. It's just going to depend on your allergies. Um, there are different kinds of wool, though, like goat and alpaca and, you know, all the other animals with fur, obviously. Or if you, like, have a dog allergy, but cats are cool, just brush your cat a lot. You can always dye your cat's hair if you want to. Like, like really? People do this? It's not weird. Well, it's a little weird, but it's okay. We like weird. Um, yeah, if you really want to try this and you've got allergies, there are ways around it. But also, if you're creating a costume for somebody and you intend to felt something, make sure they are not allergic to wool. Um... Especially if you're doing commissions for other people, always check and make sure that they've got no, like, issue with using animal products or, you know, leather, things like that. It's always just very important to ask, uh, just to make sure everybody's cool. So, I'm almost done with the layering. I'm not going to get too crazy with this. Um, at some other point, if, if you all really like this tutorial, I can always do some of the crazier fabric manipulation techniques that they do um, just to show you how cool this stuff can get yeah you can't really tell but there's a really good green going on right there get more of that good green uh, Nameless PC, I think the dander is, um, cleaned out 
when they brush it and, you know, they obviously dye it and treat the hair uh, to straighten it and stuff, which um, probably uses chemicals. Uh, it's just going to depend on who's making the wool and what they do to it. Um, like, obviously, what you don't want to do is go to worldofwool.com and go through their, I think they call it, like, raw wool. It's, like, still got the, like, skin grease in it and everything. Like, um, if you're going to make, like, a waterproof coat, you can uh, get a lot of good use out of um, greasy wool. Like, uh, they used to use greasy wool for, like, fishermen's coats, I think. Like, in the 1800s, I think. But um, you can always order or, like, just go to... Sometimes, like... I think the only p store I've seen that has it is either Craft Warehouse or Hobby Lobby. Um, and they have little packages of wool that you can just, or, you know, just Amazon. Anywhere will have little little packages of wool and just open it up, smell it, make sure they've cleaned the dander out. And then once you find a brand that has something clean, you, you can probably trust that it'll be okay for you. But yeah. Yeah, Crystal said that there are some synthetics you can use. Um, they have synthetic mixed with uh, natural. Um, those are obviously much harder to get to felt together because synthetic stuff doesn't stick um, to itself as easily as the natural fibers do. But yeah, just do some tests. I'm sure you can figure something out. There, there's always a workaround. So another cool thing we're going to do is make these little green veins. I'm going to use this crazy color. And like this is where these tools come in handy. You can like, you know, brush these out. Um, if this were thicker, I would say you could use our needle and stamp it in. Um, or if you really want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, you can put... Um, foam underneath, like squishy couch foam, and uh, like push this into your creepy cloth, obviously without the, the plastic behind it. You don't want to be poking holes in your plastic. Um, but if you just put it on uh, foam to start, you can poke these things in and you can draw. You, you can draw pictures with it if you want. You can, uh, you can do anything if, if you really want to get like a really a really exact design on here. But today I'm just going to do little veins so that it looks all haunty and creepy. And so you can just kind of pull it in the direction you want it to lay. Uh, honey bomb. Uh, the Honey Bomb's question is, how do you use Creepy Cloth as a base? Um, right now it's just laying there. This is the Creepy Cloth. You can see it under there. It's just the bottom layer on top of the plastic, and we're just laying it on dry right now, but you'll see how it sticks in just a second. We're just going to lay out a couple more of these little veinies. And then also, what we're going to do is make sure that these little holes are holes in the wool as well. And I'm only going to do that for three of them, because I want to show you guys what happens when you don't make the hole, because it's also pretty cool. Like, there's a big hole right here that you can't really see anymore, but you shall. Also, thank you for the followers. I know I'm not catching all of you, but thank you so much. I appreciate that you all are here. It works the exact same way as the silk, um, honey bomb. They are interchangeable at, in this technique. So now what we're going to do, now that we've got it all laid out, I'm going to get some of this off the table because it's crazy everywhere. And, uh, I think we're gonna, we're gonna pull this so that it's all on the plastic. And then, 
we get out our water. That's this thing. It's the uh, a weed sprayer. You can get these at Home Depot or Walmart or anywhere. Oh no! Don't fall. So you um, it's this full of soap water. It's just a uh, a couple little squirts of Dawn dish soap or whatever kind of soap you like to use. Um, not a lot, and then filled with water. Some people online say that like using hot water or cold water works better. Um, if you really wanted to get into like the technical aspect of this, hot water on natural fabric, like, yeah, it probably affects it somehow. Um, and that may or may not be important to you, and you can obviously do tests and see if using hot water or cold water makes a difference in a way that you appreciate or not, but that's totally up to you. But so now we've just sprayed a little bit of water on here, and, uh, you know, it's not drenched, but it's definitely more than damp. Um, and if you find that you're having problems with your, your stuff not uh, matting together in this next step, um, Check out how much or how little uh, soap is in your water, or how much water is in your wool. Um, if you've got too much water, it'll just be like a slip and slide in there, and nothing's going to happen. Like, you need, uh, you need friction. And then uh, sometimes if there's too much soap, uh, it'll make it frothy, you know, like the bubbles will start, and then you definitely uh, you won't get much friction. So... But also, if you don't have enough soap in there, it's not going to stick. Like, the, the, the soap really helps make... Like, like when you um, have really, really clean hands and they kind of squeak, it's that friction that we're looking for. Um, do you have any direct sponsor links for these materials so that I can buy them? Oh, nope! Nope, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. Uh, I just like sharing my, uh, my resources as much as I can. If World of Wool really wants to sponsor me, I would love that. But, um, and obviously in this next step, what we're going to want to be very careful of is that we are keeping the plastic dry on top because we are going to use a plate sander. I think it's called a plate sander. I'm just actually going to look up because I think I've got the booklet in here somewhere. Opera... Oh, it's a quarter sheet sander. This is what it is. Quarter sheet sander from Ryobi. I think this cost me like $40. Um, but I put some wax paper on the the little plate thing. I've ruined this, by the way. This is just for felting now. Um, usually you like put a plate with a, a sanding block on here. Um, but we just took all that off. I used to have a foam sheet hot glued on here, but the friction of the sander after an hour or two of doing this started melting the hot glue, which was not good, and then the foam just came off. It was awful. But I put some wax paper on because it's slippery, and it just uh, blocked the vacuum holes. The vacuum holes fill up this thing with dust usually, but we're not actually sucking anything up, and we don't want anything being sucked up into our sander, so that's why I have this on here. I need to replace the the wax paper obviously but it still works so what we're going to be doing is uh sanding this instead of rolling when you look at tutorials online what they will tell you most of the time is that you want to sandwich this in plastic then you want to put bubble wrap in here then you want to roll it up and i'll show you this just really quick what they do is say like get a pool noodle and roll it up like this and then tie it and then roll it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth that takes forever it's very tiring I actually have a lot of uh, neck tension issues so I really hated doing that and um, that's why I looked into it and found um, another lady who was using the sander instead it's a lot less manual labor, and it goes very, very quickly instead of the rolling method. But if you can't get your hands on a sander or you live in an apartment where a sander is just going to be too loud and awful, 
the rolling thing works just fine. It's it's great. It's how they've been doing it for thousands of years, even. <laughs> um, there's nothing wrong with it. This is just my hack for getting it done quickly. So what I'm going to show you is uh, me sanding this. I'm going to mute myself because this is very loud, but I'll be back in just a minute. So feel free to hang out and uh, yeah, be happy. Okay, um, I see a few questions in the chat, which I thank you for because I didn't explain myself very clearly. So the soap in the water is what's making this stuff mat together. And if, if it's, it's, it's hard to understand, it's, it, it's hard to explain as well, but basically think of it like you're making a dreadlock. Like, so when you have a bunch of hair and you like rub it together a lot, it mats. Like, like a, a mat in your cat's hair, it's all the same technology. <laughs> the same technique um we're just doing it flat um so we're just getting hair to stick to other things that's all and the soap really helps make it stickier and it quickly makes knots when it's got soap in it that's why we've got the soap um that's also why too much soap will make it too frothy and it won't stick together um you have to do a lot of tests to get the right uh, thing and also what you'll notice is that I had my towel at the ready for when the soap and water eventually squeege out all the sides because we don't want water getting anywhere near our electric sander that's very dangerous don't want anybody to get hurt everybody please be very careful if you're going to use the sander but so now what we have is wool that won't stick to our plastic which is great that means it worked if you're lifting up your plastic and you've got wool sticking to the plastic that means it's not sticking to itself which means you need to sand it more um, but so how we test this is you uh, kinda pull at it very lightly with your fingers and in some spots it's coming up as you can see like it's sticking to my fingers that means we need to sand it a little more there but this is incredible because getting it to stick to itself that much would have taken like a half an hour of rolling. 
which is still fine. If, if, if that's the only way you can do it, that's the only way you can do it, and that's totally cool. But when you're in a hurry, this is super awesome. So what we're going to do is kind of look at this. We've still got some things that aren't sticking, so we're going to felt it, or we're going to sand it just a little bit more. Let me make sure I uh, answered all the questions. What is the difference between wet felting and poking it through? Poking it through is the needle felting. Um, if you really want a very specific design, needle felting it into the creepy fabric so that it can't go anywhere is really helpful. But we don't really mind if it scoots around a little bit inside the plastic uh, just because of the design we're making right now. Um, but if that was very important to you, the needle felting is how you get it to poke in. And I can do a tutorial on that sometime too. Um, yeah, I saw some people were, uh, confused about the water, um, that's just helping it stick to itself. Um, if you've got too much water, you, uh, definitely need to soak it up. Like, if it's coming out the sides, keep it all under wraps here. Um, but yeah, that's all the water's doing. Um, if it were just dry, you'd just be rubbing it into its own big poofy hairball and it wouldn't have any form at all so that's why the water is here just to keep it uh, from getting crazy just to keep it being a shape and then I'm going to show you the bottom here they had these big danglies and they kind of made this weird straight line because of how the plastic was pinching it but at this point since it's not completely felted we can kind of move it around and tear it into little cool things. Yeah, so it'll be a little bit more crazy. And then same with this. We can see where the edge of the fabric is underneath, but um, if we want to like make the edge out of felt, we can just kind of manipulate this into a shape we like, and it'll felt together that way. Um, like the same over here, like let's just make a big hole right here and then pinch all this together and then it'll make like a cool loop that hangs off. That'll be fun. And then let's make sure our little holes are doing okay. We want to make sure that they don't close up just because I want to show you how cool that looks. Yeah, all right, so I'm going to keep felting this. I'm not going to cover up the whole top because I need to focus on this area for a minute. But I'll be right back. Hit me with more questions if I'm not making sense. Um, I like answering them. So, uh, yeah, here we go.
All right, so I just did my second round of sanding. Oh, we got another follower, Antikari. Thanks for the follow. So, um, I wish my camera would be better at this, but uh, let's see if we can pick it up. I might get soap water everywhere, but whatever. So now when I pinch it, almost none of it comes off. There's a little bit, but especially if you can do this, and none of it moves around, and none of it's stuck to your hands, you're good. Um, I think some people might, especially if you're making a garment that you're going to wear every day, like a really nice sweater or something, which people do with felting all the time, um, you might be more concerned about the felt uh, being stronger. Um, so you could always get into it more uh, with more sanding. Um, that or, or rolling whichever you're doing uh but yeah oh we got more follow honey bun thanks for the follow so now we've got this big old soggy piece of mess um which is great uh so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make sure all these little bits that we want stretched out and ugly are still stretched out because right now if they get put through the next step without separating them again they'll just be stuck like that forever but cool so now we've got this like really ugly <laughs> pattern over here um, we've got our little balls at the front that are really cool Yeah, it looks good. So the next step, well, I'll show you what the next step would be if we were following most of the tutorials. It's called fulling, and you go like this. That's it. Um, but you do that like 5,000 times. So we're going to drop it and keep dropping it. This is called fulling, and what it does is it gives the wool an opportunity to shrink into itself and continue to felt into tighter balls. Don't ask me how this happens. Once you see it happening, you'll get it, but it is really hard to explain as to why it happens that way. But you start off really softly at the beginning. The more water is in it, probably the better. You don't want it soaking wet or you're just going to be flopping around this huge messy ball of gross. So, but the more water is in it, the more the gravity helps it like mix into itself. And then also we're getting a lot of foam here, like a lot of soap. And that might be a problem. I can already see it kind of starting to scrunch up though. So maybe it won't be. If it is a problem, all you got to do is kind of like rinse it. Rinse out some of the soap so that it's more water than soap. And this is what you would be doing for, you know, 500 more times. If this was the way you, you were uh, following the traditional way of making it, most tutorials will tell you that this is what you have to do. But what we're going to do is my secret technique, which isn't that secret. I just, I found it online somewhere. Um, but what we're going to do is take our little dryer bag and put it in the dryer and make the dryer do this shit. Because it's way easier to sit and let the dryer do it. But so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to rinse some of the, f the soap out because obviously there's a lot and just put it in my dryer bag. This is obviously a very large dryer bag. We don't need this much of it. They come in smaller sizes, so. We're d I'm gonna go throw this in the dryer really quick and like in like 10 minutes, we'll have a finished piece, which is super exciting. Then we can get to decorating it, yay! So, I'll be right back. Um, I'm gonna be 
in the basement in the laundry room for just a minute. Um, hold tight, guys. So we're going to get rid of this wet plastic. And all I've done is uh, thrown it in that dryer bag after rinsing it out a little bit just to get rid of some of that soap foam. And I put it on the fluff cycle, I guess, is what it's called on mine, but it's got no heat. Um, it just flips it around with a fan on. Um, it's not roasting or wool it all. Um, adding heat might be something you want to do later if you want to like smooth it out or you know you can iron it, you can steam it, there's other techniques you can use to make it look smoother or nicer or whatever you're going for. But that's not something we're doing right now so it's just on the fluff cycle and it'll be in there for like 10 minutes um, and it's just in the bag going plop 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 Plot, which is exactly what we were doing here on the table. But now we just don't have to do it. <laughs> and that's great. Um, especially when you've got... Like when I was working on Perkins' costume, I had... I think his cloak started out at like 16 feet long. And when you've got that much felt that you're trying to uh, throw around, it's like... I don't wanna. <laughs> Let's just put it in the dryer and call it good. And it works. Um, you definitely wanna keep an eye on it and you'll see when we pull it out that sometimes it sticks to itself, uh, which would have happened on the table too. We just would have been more aware of it happening. So when we pull it out, we wanna make sure that it's laying the way we want to. We need to pull things apart that are sticking together. Um, but yeah. Uh, cat cosplay, it does it does pump air in there. It it just doesn't really matter. Um, it's just the heat that we don't want right now um, in the dryer. So it's just on the fluff cycle for no heat added. Um, and the longest fluff cycle mine does is 20 minutes, but that's all you would ever need, even for a really big piece. And if you take it out and it's not working, that's probably because there's too much water or there's not enough water or there's too much soap or there's not enough soap. Um, and if something's going wrong and it's not shrinking up how you want it to, don't be afraid. It's okay. Just rinse it out. Try again. Add more soap if there's not enough. Rinse out soap if there's too much. If you haven't ruined it, it's all good. Um, I think the only thing that can go wrong is if it shrinks up too much. And then at that point, you'd have to kind of rip the fibers apart to stretch it back out to whatever size you wanted it. But that's like if you've dried it way too long or something. Um, but even then, it's not the end of the world. So, if, if it's just not turning out the way you thought it would, just uh, play with your variables and 
Just like with anything, it's just a test. You'll get it. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about Perkins' costume, or the goblin, or anything, uh, I'm here. And we can, uh, yeah. I asked earlier, but for 3D projects, aka hats and boxes, do we do the pattern flat and sew it into the shape afterwards? Cat cosplay, that is a great question. Um, I know Holly uh, mentioned using shellac when she felted her hat. Um, if you uh, if you want to make hats, that's a whole other thing, um, especially if you want them to be stiff. Uh, there are um, forms that you can get that you uh, you take like a felting rock, a felting stone is what they're called, and you use the friction on the outside of the shape. So I think for like a witch hat, for example, you get this big cone. And it, like I think they can make them out of wicker or all sorts of stuff. Um, I haven't looked into it a ton. I'm not an expert on making 3D objects with felt. But uh, I've seen, there, there's so many tutorials online about how to make hats and different things. Um, but usually you're either needle felting, which is the uh, dry form with this, and um, poking it into a shape, or you've got a form and you're wet felting it onto the form, and then once it's shrunken on there and dried, you pull it off. Um, and there are different additives, like uh, fabric stiffeners and things like that, if you really wanted uh, it to not flop around. So it's all just based on what you want to make. Um, there's probably a tutorial out there that'll explain something that'll be helpful. But yeah. Honey, Honey Bomb says, I just really love that you put his name on it. Yes. <laughs> Um, as part of the design that's on the Dungeon Master's Guide, Sararak has some markings on his shoulders, and my very good friend Tyler Jacobson is the one who designed that outfit, and I was like, Tyler, what are those? And he was just like, well, I just kind of, I, you know, he, he, like with many illustrators, you're, you're just, uh, your job is to make it look cool, not always to make sense. Um, so I had to, to change a few things. Uh, to make it make sense, and that just left to open this, like, this gap of, like, what am I going to do on the pauldrons? There needs to be some cool designs, but, you know, I don't want to just, like, put some random swirlies on there, and I happen to have access to the D&D uh, &D fonts that are not released, and I cannot release them. Don't ask me any questions about them, but <laughs> uh, I have those, and I like to bust them out when it's appropriate, and it was a moment where I was like, this will be fun. Per this is Perkins costume, so I'm going to write his name on it in a way that looks really cool. And I'm, I was I was really excited that the internet thought that was so fun. <laughs> Where can I find pictures of the cloak you made for Perkins? <sighs> well, the Nameless PC, that is something that's on my list. Um, I will be visiting the office again soon, and hopefully I can put it all on a mannequin and take some really nice pictures. Uh, because... I was making that thing up until the last second in a fit of exhaustion, and I <laughs> did not get to take any great pictures of it, so hopefully soon I'll be getting on that. Um, but there are pictures online from the live show, or you can just watch the live show. Um, it's on, uh, I think it's on the D&D Twitch channel, but it's also on the Penny Arcade YouTube. Um, if you just Google, like, PAX... Uh, Ack Inc. Live Show 2017, you'll be able to see it. Um, let me see. Yeah, cat cosplay. Um, you can always sew these things together, too. Like, you're just making fabric. Like, it doesn't have to be seamless. A lot of felters like to make their stuff seamless. Um, and you can do that by adding felt onto felt and using the friction to get it to kind of stick together and there's a lot of like seamless dresses that people have made online and you kind of you put it on the mannequin and shrink it with friction on the mannequin which isn't something I've tried yet but people do do it um but you can always just stitch stuff together too it's just fabric um yeah honeycomb bomb honey bomb comb I know uh <laughs> Uh, 
I'm glad uh, I'm glad you guys like the the headpiece too. I, I really wanted to make it comfy for him, and I know he loves wearing hats, so I was like, I'm just gonna do that. How long did it take to make the costume then? Um, it had been planned for a long time, but uh, because of other obligations like my goblin costume and I was trying to set up craft tags, I didn't get to it um, until. I'd say like three months beforehand and a couple weeks of those months are spent ordering supplies because I live in the middle of nowhere and I can't just go buy felt at the store or wool or leather or, you know, all the leather working materials and stuff like that that I use. So when I'm making a costume, there's a couple weeks of me uh, buying supplies and waiting for them to come in. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I'd say about six weeks of actual labor. Um, Cat Cosplay says, if you make a large felt cloth, can you cut it afterwards with little fear of it falling apart, or do you need to treat edges after cutting? No! Um. No! <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna show you my goblin costume, which was all made out of felting, but I took it upstairs already. Um. You can, you can cut it afterwards and nothing will happen. Um, it's just like cutting... Uh, like, say, a sponge. Like, the sponge isn't going to fray apart, you know? Like, especially if you felted it really strongly, or if you used a lot of felt, it's going to make its own whole entity. It's not like a woven fabric where if you cut the edge, it'll start fraying. I mean, of course, you can fray it if you would like to, because um, it is just hair, and you could tweeze it back apart with your fingers if you wanted to, but... That's all up to you. You don't need to do anything special to keep it from falling apart. Danny is awesome. I agree, Ray! <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, everybody needs to watch or catch up on Waffle Crew before tomorrow, because I think tomorrow stuff's going to change like crazy. I mean, I don't, I don't even know where we're going to be. I mean, because it's the new season, and obviously we need to wrap up where we are right now, but obviously uh, we're hoping to make it to Chult, and I don't know who that, how that's going to happen, but that'll be interesting. Yeah, Cat Cosplay, you could add, uh, you could add felt or wool to cover the stitches if you really wanted to. That's a good idea. Yes, it does return tomorrow, honey palm. Uh, no, you probably can't binge two seasons in a day. Um, if you just watch, like, I would say, like, the last, like, five episodes, you'll be caught up enough to understand what's happening but yeah, and Strix needs to come back. I don't know how that's going to happen either, but... Jeebus! How long has our stuff been in the dryer? I didn't look at the time. Um, I feel like I can still hear the dryer going, though, so... I'm gonna go check it because it's a really small piece and I think it's probably close to done by now so I'll be right back guys
All right. So, a bad thing happened. It messed up, which is okay, because now I can show you guys what to do. So what happened was, um, it didn't shrink. Um, there was still too much stuff in it. Uh, soap being the stuff I'm talking about. <laughs> and, uh, it didn't, like, glom up like we wanted. It did it in a couple spots, which I'm going to show you. But, um, as you can see, there are spots here where we've got really cool shrinky patterns. And that could even just be enough if that's what you wanted. But we want to go even more! But as you can see, it's still already shrunk a little bit, and it almost fits around my arm perfectly. But so what I'm going to do instead is just do it in front of you guys so you guys can see. And I think we don't have enough water in it now, so we're going to add in just a little bit more soap. I'm going to get my plastic back out so we can keep everything dry. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but there are a lot of really cool sparkles, even on the back side. Like they come through, you can see them. So now we've got a good amount of soapy water in here, and we're just going to start beating it. And because it's already been through a little bit of fulling, I guess is what they call it, I don't know why. but. Um, we know that the wool is going to stick to the creepy cloth and it won't come off, so we can be uncareful with it. And the harder you can uh, beat it, the faster it will make those little shrinky patterns we want. My soul, your soul is mine forever. Yes, uh, Polytechnics, that is what happens when you follow me, is it says your soul is mine forever. And I see somebody asked about the sparkles. That was the Angelina, which is a synthetic fiber that's iridescent, and we put that on first um, on top of the creepy cloth because we needed to sandwich it in between the cloth and the wool, otherwise it won't have stuck because it's a synthetic fiber. Also, yes, this this is really fun, especially when you're mad at something. But so, as you can see, it is continuing to get smaller and shrinkier. It's like a shrinky dinks, but with cloth. And we're gonna keep pulling this apart just to make sure that it doesn't stick. And at this point, we can even like make like oh I don't want that one attached at all I'll just pull it apart or like oh there's too many big circles let's just pull this one apart too there we go and our holes are still doing good all right Yes, Honey Bomb, I'm going to be putting all of my Craft Tags episodes on YouTube. Eventually, it's on my list of stuff to do. But I do intend to. And I might even just make like a fun teensy video, like in five minutes, just so that you guys can see this quicker. <laughs> it's like fabric taffy. Wet, gross, shrinky dinks. Yeah, I love it. Also, don't even tempt me with Craft Hags food episodes because I love cooking and I rarely get a chance to cook anymore. Maybe someday there will be a Craft Hags episode where we make food. 
D and D foods. So, as you can see, we're getting these big bubblies. That's what we want. The bigger bubbles mean that the felt didn't stick to the creepy cloth as much, which means the cloth is just making like a big parachute while the stuff under it shrinks, which is fine. It looks cool. And then we want to make sure all our little hangy doodles are sticking off. We don't want them to get stuck to things we didn't mean for them to get stuck to. Thanks for the new follow, Magical Kit Cats. So we're just going to do a little bit more here. And you want to keep twisting it. So that you're not just hitting it in the same spot over and over and over. Otherwise it will only shrink in that one spot. And this is also like a, a pros and cons with the dryer. With the dryer you're just kind of letting it go and do whatever it's going to do. But when you're hand fulling it you get to actually control how it shrinks. Depending on which way you're balling it up. Like you could fold it that way and it will shrink like this. If you balled it up like this it would shrink that way you can you can figure out all sorts of things with how to control this stuff and it's great but look at how much smaller that is now like we started and it was the complete length of like from here to here you can't even see my hands it was way bigger but now look it's already shrunken and when we put it on my arm Look at that! It is the perfect width for a little bit of lacing on the other end to hold it together. That'll be great. So now what we're going to do is rinse all the soap out. So I'm going to be back here in my bathroom. And I usually would do this with a huge, um, a huge piece of felt out on my, um, my clothes hanging line in the backyard. And I would spray it with the hose. Like, just use the little hose setting on mist or whatever. You don't want to, like, beat the crap out of it or anything. With the hose. Because it's still delicate fabric. You don't want to, like, blast it. But then look at that! Now it's still wet. But look at all these cool textures we have. That looks disgusting. And then when you get really into, like, shrinking it a lot all these really cool little effect fibers that we have. They make little like bumpies underneath and that looks really awesome. And then see if we really like the other side, it's like gold and sparkly and, or I mean, you know, black and sparkly and you've got the holes. And you could even get really fancy and like cut like diamond patterns out and make this whole thing out of just lattice of felt lines and skip the fabric completely there are like literally if this is intriguing you at all please head on over to pinterest and type in felting or uh textile manipulation and you're just gonna have a field day with all the cool things people have figured out how to do with this. So this is almost completely dry actually because I wrung it out really well. So basically this is what it's going to look like when it's dry. And we can just kind of wing it around and get some more of the water out. But oh look that even stretched it out the long way. And that's the thing, is if this doesn't fit anymore, you can always just stretch it back 
to the size you need. This stuff's really manipulatable. But so, um, it is still a little damp, but I can show you all the other cool things you can do with it. Like say, oh, you've got a bunch of cool beads. You can just sew those on there. We can make like really cool little uh, little um, like decorations with beads on here. Um, like for this, I would probably like use this and just start sticking beads on. Um, and then I've got a bunch of like iridescent ones and you could almost make it look moldy. If you use the right color palette, you could uh, kind of make it look like like disgusting skin. Like if you wanted to be a zombie and make some like really gross sleeves or something. Or you know, just like any undead character. Oh, this isn't a beading needle. Never mind. <laughs> uh, my beads won't fit on this needle and I don't currently know where all my beading needles are. But uh, you can add beads. That would be cool. Um, something we can do really quickly though is add lacing so we can wear it. So, let me come on over here, find some nice leather laces, or ribbon, or twine, or anything. My whole craft room is a complete disaster after all the projects lately, so bear with me. Ooh, this will be fun. This is uh, just a nice, simple black ribbon I have. Um, it's kind of a brownish black, but that's cool. Um, and all we gotta do is poke holes. Um, and if you're not gonna pull really hard on this or anything, you don't need to worry about like putting in grommets or any of that. If you are going to be uh, sewing a lot of stuff to your felt, um, like heavy things, I learned this on my goblin costume because I made huge uh, claws out of Sculpey and um, sewed them onto big plastic leaves that were on my chest and then sewed all of that to the felt and um, the felt I used for that was really thick pretty strong stuff but over time and with me sweating inside of it because the goblin is really sweaty to wear the felt in the back of my shirt started slowly stretching and it's the same um, with the skirt that I had I had a felt skirt with velcro on it and it was fit to perfectly go around my waist but through all the movement and bending around um, it started to stretch back out again and I could probably have fixed that by making my felt stronger um, which would just mean more uh, sanding making sure that the the mat was really tight but um, in a pinch, it, th those things can just be remedied by putting something uh, stiff in the, the back or you know on the back side of whatever you're doing. So um, since these are just going to be hanging around my my arm, we don't really need to worry about that right now. But if we were going to be attaching like lots of bones or decor or heavy things that would be pulling on the felt either way we'd probably want to put some sort of backing on here that won't stretch um, so you could if you wanted it to all be felt you could start with a pre-made felt sheet which they sell um, at world of wool um, and it's it's just the craft felt like the exact felt you're thinking of from the craft store it comes in all sorts of colors and that stuff 
is so it's like machine felted so it's really tight it's not going to stretch out um, and you could felt right onto that if you wanted the whole piece to be really sturdy so I'd recommend being careful with how much weight you add to your felt but there are workarounds as always <laughs> yeah, Mandy, I wasn't being very delicate with it. I called you Mandy, is that okay? I'm talking about mandolin. I always I always forget because I know some of you guys' Twitter handles and they're different sometimes and so if I call you by the wrong, the wrong name, I'm really sorry. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Oh, I know, uh, Atelier Heidi had quite the disaster lately, and it, my heart goes out to her, because that really blows, but I'm really glad they're, they're, uh, getting into a new house in a, a better area where the air is cleaner. They, uh, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, um, Atelier Heidi is the wife of Jared from, uh, Face Camera Action. And she has her own crafting shows, which I love to watch. Um, she does a lot of Twitch stuff. It's really great. Um, I've actually learned a lot of my leatherworking knowledge from watching her. And uh, while they were away, their house flooded somehow and ruined much of her crafting supplies and craft room and everything, and it was awful. So... I, my heart goes out to her. I'm really sorry, Heidi. That really blows. But I'm excited to see what she does next. So basically all I did was poke a bunch of holes in the sides. And I'm not even measuring out, like, are these holes even, you know other things that may matter to you guys in the future if you wanted to make a really nice looking one. Like obviously you should measure these out and make sure they're all nice and neat and whatnot. But because this is scrummy and scrummy would have just kind of made this out of forest garbage or sewer garbage or wherever she lives at the moment. We don't really care if all the holes line up and it kind of actually is going to look cooler if they're a little bit mismatched and messy. So, I'm just lacing this ribbon in here, and especially if you've got like a nature -y druid type character, or a ranger, you know, or even just like a rogue who's kind of, kind of grody, all this stuff can be really messy and look awesome. Keep it. I'm going to make a hole here because I think I missed an important area. I hope Heidi never quits making things. I, uh, I love everything she makes and she is an inspiration. But, you know, sometimes those things happen and you just need a break from reality for a while and, you know. So whatever she decides to do, I am fully in support of her, but I really hope that she continues making things in the future. <laughs> we'll do a couple more so that the end isn't just hanging all over the place. 
And then we'll put it on and see what it looks like. And the cool stuff, the cool thing about felt is that you can make it as thin or as thick as you want. And, uh, like, so if you know you're going to, like, say, Dragon Con, where it's hot and sweaty, like, always, you can make it a lot thinner. Um, like, my Zandala cloak was, it looks wintry, like a coat, and I was still pretty cool because of how thin I made the cloak. But if you're just, like, you know cosplaying in Seattle in the fall, you might not mind it being a little bit warmer, and you can layer on this wool as thick as you want. Or like if you're LARPing, and you know it might be cold, this would be great. So, look at that! Oh, you know what we should do? We should make a thumb hole. You want to make a thumb hole? Let's see how it looks first. So, I just pull on that, and you got all these fun danglies that look great. Here's what it looks like on my hand. Up here, all this stuff's just gonna dangle like crazy, and if this was too long, I could always uh, shrink it more like this way, and it would be shorter and fit my arm a little bit better. Or I could do embroidery and like make stitching on and like make some of this raise up so that it had even more texture. Or I could add more beads like I was saying. There's like a million things you can do to this. And then if you're like a druid and you uh, you have like a color palette that's like fall you could easily make this in fall colors. Um, hang on. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, like, so this is just a, a gross, kind of evil, foresty looking palette. But you could, you could do this, you know, with nice colors, with girly colors, with fall colors, anything. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the needle felting so you get what I'm talking about. I need to find some foam. So I will be right... Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! My whole craft room is basically piles at the moment, so we're, uh... Oh, my God! Kayla, I'm so excited. Let me show you how to decorate this. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying this out flat um, so that I'm not poking through the whole thing. And this is something you should probably do before you lace it up, but just for for the sake of fun, we'll do a, a little demo with needle felting here. Um, I don't know. What, what should we what should we design on here? Let's let's do a Let's do a mushroom, because Scrummy's favorite thing in the world is mushrooms. Um, and I haven't done very much of this, so forgive me while I figure it out a little bit. But so, we can use the little comb to arrange this on here. And then this is your needle. They have little barbs on them. The camera's not going to catch that, but they're super freaking sharp. So be so careful. But yeah, it's we're just going in and out like this. But on the spots where we want the wool to stick. And so obviously right there, it's stuck. And then we just go over a little bit. That looks great. 
going to continue that a little bit. And then you can use this technique to basically paint, paint on, like, decals. Like, if you're a... If you've got, like, a, a clan that your druid is a part of, or a tribe of any kind, and they have a cool symbol you'd like to incorporate, this is a really easy way to do it without getting out, like, embroidery stuff and trying to sew. This is kind of more like coloring, which is great. So I'm going to pull some of this out because I think we have too much. And just keep poking. We're going to make it a little wider. Just be really careful. This is where I should be using this because this is how you use this and not poke yourself. Beep, 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 beep. So there's like the top. And then I'm just gonna kinda roll this up in a little a little bit of like a column. And it's literally just like painting or coloring. So as as crazy as you want to get with the colors, you can. Um, because the, the wool, you can either dye it to exactly the color you want, or you can buy it in the hundreds of shades that they have at World of Wool. So I'm going to use this lighter green just to kind of add a lighter shade at the top so that it kind of looks like there's light on this mushroom. And again, use the comb instead of your fingers because you will miss and you will poke yourself. Yeah, look at that. So excited. Use the comb. I'm going to add just a little bit more. I know it's not really looking like a mushroom yet, but it will. You just gotta have faith. Yeah, Sirenscape's being kind of weird today. I don't really know if I messed it up or what's going on, but it's like the rain track doesn't start over when it normally does. I think I just need to restart my computer. I'm sure that's all it is. And for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, I use a program called Sirenscape, which has a lot of really cool fantasy sound sets um, that just play on random, and it's really cool for adding ambiance to your role-playing games or just to have around, honestly. And they've got, like, everything you could ever imagine. 
Like, do you want it to sound like you're fighting a red dragon? Well, they've got a sound set for that. Here, let's add like a little, couple little spots. So you can like ball it up. the rain again. So weird. Yes, yeah. We got a little spot on our mushroom. We'll add a little bit bigger one over here. And the comb is great because it can literally just hold it still and you can stick that needle right through it <laughs> and it still holds it it's great it's great <laughs> oh feel free to derail the stream honey bomb i love that you guys have your own whole thing going on i have never larped i'm actually excited to go back and read everything you guys are saying uh I would love to LARP, but um, I just don't really have time for stuff like that <laughs> right now. I really wish I did. I know it's super... I mean, like, I don't even get to read books that I think look interesting these days, but that's because my career is going so well. It, it's a, a great problem to have, um, but someday... Someday I will LARP. I must. I actually really love all the LARPing stuff that uh, the guys from High Rollers put out. That's like some of the most interesting stuff I've seen on LARPing. And they kind of explain everything that they do out there and what it's like and how much fun it is. It's pretty cool. And plus, they're just really great dudes. Alright, so now we're gonna... add a little bit more down to the stem here. Obviously, this is just a really quick, messy mushroom. It didn't really even turn out that well, but it's cute for now, and we could have added so many more colors and all sorts of stuff if we wanted to really spend time making it nice. I think this would be also really cool for, like, a warlock who's, you know, serving a, a demon of any kind and just being able to put their insignia on there is pretty special for the character so um or even like a paladin if I, um if you happen to be playing a paladin that needed some arm warmers or really you can make this into any any garment you want to This would be a really easy way to add insignia on the front of like a, a paladin or a monk thing. Those, I, I don't know what they're called, but the little things that hang. It's like a panel of the robe that hangs down. Usually they've got some sort of insignia on there, and that could be really, this could be a really cool way to add texture and insignia to your outfit.
But yeah, look at that. There's a really quick little mushroom. I'm gonna cough again. Excuse me. But so, um, there are all sorts of things you can do with felting, and I'm really glad I got to show you guys. This is still wet and cold and gross, but uh, I'm going to make a quick thumb hole. Right here. But so, that's how you do that. Um... If you're really interested in making something specific out of this, there's probably a way that somebody has already figured out how to make it work. So uh, check out Pinterest, check out tutorials. There's lots of people putting out like just easy, cheap PDFs full of information. Um, and I definitely want to encourage you all to go pay for those because those are how some of those people make their money and uh, supporting streamers and creators of all kinds is great but yeah this is a uh, pretty fun cool little thing we've got a little mushroom here hey mushroom and look at that that's like not going anywhere for such a small amount of work and obviously we could have made it look a lot nicer but you could do anything you want with this kind of technique um it really lends itself well to naturey uh, feeling stuff, swamp witch sort of things, hags, obviously. Um, but yeah, and uh, uh, if you end up making something like this, uh, make sure you tag uh, craft hags on Instagram or Twitter, and I would love to retweet you uh, and share what you've made with the community because we're all about that here. Um, or if you if you use felting in a way that I've never seen before, I'd love to see that too. Uh, definitely share it with the community because we love that stuff. Uh, yeah, I also want to thank Sirenscape, even though they're being weird today, uh, for all the really cool um, sounds that they provide us with. Um, and thanks for all the followers. And if I missed any donations, thank you for that too. You guys are so incredible and amazing, and I love having you all around. And I've missed craft tags. I've missed you all. So I'm super glad that we're back. I want you all to stay tuned because there's going to be some crazy announcements later this week. And you will like them. I promise. So, um, and they are costume related. I have gotten some new jobs. So, um, that is what we will be doing on craft tags uh, for... Uh, the next few weeks at least uh so stay tuned it's gonna be really really cool i'm really excited uh to share all that with you and it's gonna be super fun so um until next week i will uh see you guys on the internets at craft tags on instagram and twitter or follow me at danny hartel if you just want to see what i'm doing all the time because i'm doing a bunch of other stuff that's not craft tags related pretty often also, I might be talking about Destiny 2 a lot because I love that game. But, uh, I will see you guys later. Uh, thanks for showing up. I love you all. Be good to each other and, uh, have a nice week. Goodbye!